Hi guys, it's Stephanie. It's it's January 15th and it's Saturday. Gotta get my seatbelt on. So um I got up at 7.30, got washed, had breakfast, I made me a scrambled egg with bacon and ham sandwich on very thin bread with cheese. Glass of juice and then I had a very small bowl of cereal. I feel good, I feel well rested. Um, yesterday I got all my errands done. I got all my errands done yesterday. I did groceries, I did some dusting around the house yesterday, and I did my laundry. So today is just going to be pure relaxation. However, oh, I almost forgot, the skies are incredibly blue. I always got to say this because I'm very fortunate to be living in a, in a, in a uh, warmer state for the time of year anyway. Um, it's 63 degrees outside. Whenever it's in the 60s or 50s or 40s here in Florida, that's because the other parts of the country are being blasted with a harsh winter. And I'm very fortunate to even have a 63 degree weather. Yes, 63 degrees is cold for us. That's why I'm wearing a jacket. So, I'll continue when I come right back. This is Stephanie. I just want to say thank you so much for visiting my channel today. If you're a subscriber, thank you for subscribing. If you're a visitor just checking out my channel for the first time and browsing through my videos, if you find something that resonates with you, please consider subscribing. But if you do, don't forget to hit that top bell so you get future notifications of all my uploads. You guys enjoy. Have a nice day. Okay, so I'm down here at my favorite park and ride, right near the uh, the bay. Um, between St. Armas and Sarasota. I like coming here because I can see the whole entire sky is being blue. I got beautiful palm trees in front of me. Um, right now there's a beautiful boat. Um, Passing along here in the water. The water is semi still. And um, and I got a nice uh, hot cup of coffee after having my nice breakfast this morning. So, anyways, let's begin. So, before I begin, let me start by saying right now in America and other parts of the world, Transgender issues are at its highest. I mean, there's a lot of tension right now. A lot of people are saying it's because of woke. Woke is when um, we, 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 we um, have an assembly to protest um, it's a certain unfairness going on right now in, uh, in either racism or society like the transgender community not being treated fairly 
that's the woke. The woke is when they assembly or they assemble um, to bring attention to unfairness, either racially or maybe unjust causes. My conversation is going to be entirely on the transgender issue we're having right, right now. Years ago, it began with bathroom issues, and that's still a problem today in most states, okay? Bathroom issues. What bathrooms do transgenders use, okay? And I'm trying not to be political, but I'm sorry, this is very political. It's gone political. They've made it political. Because it's such a catch-22, okay? Okay. When it comes to trans issues, I agree to disagree, okay? Why? Let's talk about the banning of trans women playing in the same sports as women, cisgender. I agree to disagree. I agree that if you transition before you began your puberty, you should be allowed. I disagree that if you're a late onset transgender person, then you should not be allowed for the obvious reasons. Because I would say that most of your life that you've lived, or half your life you lived as a male, okay? Or if you're a trans man, then if you lived half your life as female, then you should not um, play male sports or vice versa. Just because, just because. Because your bodies have already had formed those um, attributes of your birth sex that it's not fair it's not fair i don't think that a trans man should go into a boxing ring with a cisgender man it's just not fair it's not fair for the trans man you'll get pulverized okay it's not fair I don't think that a trans girl or a trans teen should, should be involved in sports if they transition after their puberty. If they're in college, all right, they should not be playing the same sports as other, other girls. Just because they didn't ward off the hormones before puberty began. That's just me, it's my take, it's my opinion. Now, let's put that behind us. Today, because of the woke revolution and many parts of the government and, and parts of careers, in some careers, are not recognizing trans people in those careers. For example, a trans woman decides to go to a Lamaze meeting where mothers go for a support group before they're given birth, where they practice their breathing and around other couples or other mothers, a trans woman went into a Lamaze group and was thrown out because most of the mothers felt uncomfortable. She went there because she felt she needed to be there because her partner was having a child. But her partner that was having the child didn't go. She went alone. And she's a trans woman. She was asked to leave.
a trans woman midwife was quoted to be accused of not being a woman. She, she has all her credentials, but because most pregnant women, mothers, were quoted as saying, I don't feel comfortable near her slash him because she's not a real woman. I don't want to be under her care. I think we're deep into, into this transgender thing and it's expanding, it's broadening that the transgender community is being attacked by all different sides here, all different facets and all different arenas of the, the social sphere. Okay. Does this mean that if a trans man is a police officer, that he will not get the, re the respect of his peers because he was born female? That's what's happening right now. The woke revolution is said to have caused this. So all these things that's happening is like, an, is like a preemptive strike. For example, when a woman is, is going through training to be a midwife, they are not to use terms as mother or um, like mother or female body or stuff like that. They're, they're being told to use words or sentences like a life-giving organism body <laughs> because if there's a trans person who is being trained in the field of a midwife, okay, or to deliver babies, they may be offended. So all this is preempt is preempt is preemptive on the basis that what if there's a trans woman who's being trained, we don't want to offend her. Years ago, I was at a trans group meeting with therapists and probably 15 or 20 other trans people there. And out of the blue, one of the trans girls said, she was already in her 60s and she was a late onset transsexual. And she starts crying and she says, I just want to have a baby. What's wrong with this picture? And some of the some of the people in the group started laughing. She wants to give birth. How is this possible? You lived 60, 65% of your life as male, and even if you didn't, you still couldn't have a child. Does she mean she wants to adopt a baby? Does she want to be a foster parent? I don't know. But clearly, she wanted to give birth. How is that possible? Will you tell someone someone like that? That's sad. We're born with male bodies 
first of all, I already have a son. Whether my whether my son grew my body or not, it's still the same thing. It was my sperm that contributed to his birth. So I was a I was a key element in having him alive with us and being my son and him being bo uh, born. I was a contributor, but I didn't give birth to him. I contributed. So I could say I had a child, technically, but not, not physically like his mom. The other thing too is most children of trans parents don't want to call their dad, who is now a woman, mom. Should I go out and petition about this and complain and tell my son that he needs to call me his mother? No. No. Absolutely not. I will always be his father. I will always be his father. But that's that's obviously something that I had to get used to in my mind as I transitioned and realized that no matter the depth of my transition, he already has a mother. My ex-wife is his mother. And I will always be his dad. But I'd like to be respected that if my son referred to me with the right pronouns, yes, I'm no longer a, a, a he or a him, okay? I am now a she or her. That I will argue against. But no, I cannot, I cannot ever be his mother. If my ex-wife passes away, I could be his mother and his father, okay? Spiritually, if you guys understand. But right now, the woke revolution, because now there are riots about every little thing that that our governing bodies are preemptively changing terms in how words are used that it's causing a rift it's giving it's giving some groups in the political arena certain strengths that's why now there's petition against uh, trans women participating in the same sports as women. This is going to go on and go on and go on. Now it's affecting a person's career. What type of job that this trans woman wants to do. And just last time we spoke about careers and earning and making money. What if you you found a career that you want to pursue and it's in, in the medical industry. And you have a patient who's a cisgender woman and she doesn't want to be under your care. Then what do you do? There's nothing you can do. You can actually lose a job if you decide to be a midwife. And because of all this, I am now reading that um, that uh, male gyneco gyneco gynecologists are losing some of their patients. And they're just men. They're not trans men. These are just men who have always been gynecolo gynecologists or OBGYNs, okay? that some of their patients are not feeling comfortable anymore. 
because of trans issues because they're mixing a male to female woman and they're not they're not showing us the respect that we should respect and now they're com they they they're convoluting these together they're saying well there's a lot of men who are saying they're really women so now they're going to transition in the past there have been male doctors who have transitioned and still kept their medical licenses as doctors it seems like it seems like we now got to create a whole new era starting from scratch is it going to be to a point where trans doctors can only treat trans patients that they can't treat cisgender patients I think that's how it's going to be if you go to a dentist because in the past male dentists lost their licenses to putting their patients under anesthesia that the patients were raped by male dentists so now those male dentists are they only going to be dentists to male patients i think we're heading in some tough times it's just not it's it's not just covid these are tough times that we are under right now I don't know. I want to hear you guys' opinion on all this stuff. Where is this going to end up being? That trans specialists or trans doctors are only going to treat trans people. I already said that the trans community is very, very sparse. We're spread out very thin. We're not concentrating in just one area. You know, I think ultimately it's going to be up to the patient to decide who they want to be under, whose care do they want to be under. Okay. First off, I don't know why any man wants to be an OBGYN. Okay. If I was a cisgender woman, I wouldn't feel comfortable with any man touching my privates I'd rather go to a woman that's enough for today I hope I struck up some kind of interest if you guys would just tell me what you think on this subject because it's hot and it's getting hotter you guys have a nice day